passionate and avid writer and researcher. She's a, contrib a contributor at the Smog blog, Ravel.ca, the Huffington Post, and Vancouver Observer, focusing on Canadian climate issues, including Alberta's tar sands, hydraulic fracturing, which we're beginning to know a whole lot more about, and the impact on First Nations community. And the Embridge, of course, this is going to be the fight of our lives, the Embridge Northern Gateway Pipeline. She's currently lead now, a director, leadnow.ca's director. Uh, an amazing new organization that is, um, she'll tell you more about it. She's their director of research. She's an international campaigner of someofus.org, a global corporate campaigning organization that holds corporations accountable. Fancy that, where the government doesn't. Uh, we're lucky to have organizations that do. Emma holds a master's degree in political science from the University of Victoria, and I should tell you that she's changed her name, well, on Facebook, from Emma Pullman to Emma No Embridge Pullman. So, <laughs> Emma. Am I okay? Thanks, Denise, for the warm welcome. It's a pleasure to be here and to share a stage with these amazing women and this amazing crowd of women and some men, too. Um, it's really wonderful to be here. Um, thank you, Janet, for your poetry. It was beautiful. Um, I live in Vancouver these days, but Victoria is sort of my second home um, after I grew up in Stephen Harper's Calgary Southwest. Um, it's true. Um, it, made an, it made an activist out of me, though. Um, <laughs> my folks relocated to the West Coast, and I did my master's degree out here. So I'd like to tell people that my hometown is Victoria, BC. Um, so I'm going to tell you a bit about my work with uh, leadnow.ca and also my work as a uh, climate change writer. Um, so a climate change writer and an increasingly an investigative journalist. So I come into this work first and foremost as a climate activist. Um, but for me today, at this time, in this climate, with this government, I don't believe that I can only be a climate activist and not a political activist either. We have a government that is backing out of Kyoto. We have a government that before, it, before the inquiry about the Northern Gateway Pipeline has already basically said he's going to approve it. We have, we have, but we have no future with catastrophic climate change. So I believe that these two things are inextric inextricably connected for me. So first of all, I work with an organization called leadnow.ca. We launched about a year ago. Um, <laughs> If you don't know about it, you should get involved. Um, we are working to build a broad people-powered movement, um, deep participatory democracy, um, and hold our government accountable. So we've done some incredible things in the last year, including um, most recently getting 42,000 Canadians to sign a petition calling for a public inquiry into the robocall scandal. To speak of women's issues, during the Ontario election, we did some work um, to get gender, the gender pay gap as an election issue on Ontario. We've also gotten 10,000 10, Canadians to speak out about the Northern Gateway Pipeline. Um, so we've been doing some really amazing work, but I think today I'm going to focus on my climate work. Um, so. I uh, write for a bunch of different places, but one of them is Desmog Blog. It's a climate change website that was started about five or six years ago. It's been recognized by Time Magazine as one of their top blogs. And there we sort of hold, um, we call out the, the, the stinky bad PR that governments and the oil industry try to 
how when they try to confuse the public about the science of climate change, we say, uh uh uh, that's bogus. And we kind of hold them accountable to that. So um, the reason I got the job, and I think this is fitting for International Women's Day, is that they didn't have a female staff writer. So I walked in and I said, hey guys, you don't have a female staff writer, and that's a problem. And then they hired me. <laughs> so, so there I've been working on stuff about the tar sands, about climate, about Keystone XL, about the Northern Gateway Pipeline. And one of my biggest pet peeves is ethical oil. It just, it just really rubs me the wrong way. I don't know if you've heard about it, but if you haven't, maybe you're lucky that you've been spared. Um, basically, I think that it's important that we talk about this ethical oil argument insofar as it connects to the Northern Gateway Pipeline and the efforts of the oil industry and the Harper government to call people in this room radicals, treacherous, bad feminists, because you can't be an environmentalist and a feminist at the same time, according to them. So I think that the ethical oil argument is offensive to women. It tells us that we have to choose one or the other, environmentalism or feminism, and we don't, because I'm pretty sure that most of the people in this room don't believe that it's a choice. They believe that it's a bait and a switch. Look this way while we try to build a pipeline. Um, I also think that by calling it ethical oil, it negates the incredible work that people in this room and people all over the world um, do in global solidarity with women's movements. Um, and these guys don't care about women's issues. They don't care about the plight of women in um, Saudi Arabia or in other countries. They're only in it to sell our oil abroad. Um, and I think that it's also important it being International Women's Week, to talk about what stories get silenced when we talk about ethical oil. We do not, when we do this, we don't talk about the gender pay gap in places like Fort McMurray. Men earn $76,000 to a women's $26,000. There is violence against women on the rise in the community. The only women's shelter in Fort McMurray, it's called Unity House, is massively underfunded. A couple of years ago, some of the women went on a hunger strike to try and get funding for the, for the shelter. So one of the wealthiest places in the country, in the world maybe, um, has to turn away 400 women and their families every year. Um, and because the cost of living is so high in Fort McMurray, a lot of women end up returning home to, to violent situations or unsafe situations. So I think that it's important that we think about ethical oil as a bait and a switch and also about the tar sands as a women's issue, something that affects all of us in this room. The latest tactic by the same folks that have done ethical oil um, is called ourdecision.ca. It's a website that they've set up, and it's around the whole idea that um, foreign radicals are, are um, hijacking the pipeline decision. It's, it's ludicrous, but, but they're doing it somehow. So they're telling us that you can't, that local environmental groups, they're totally neg negating the incredible work that local and British Columbian environmental groups are doing to oppose the Northern Gateway Pipeline and saying that, no, no, no. These are foreign radical groups. These are people who don't care about Canadian jobs. These are, these are treacherous Canadians. Um, well, if, if, they're tre if they're radicals and treacherous, then that's me. <laughs> um, I'll just quickly wrap up. Um, I could go into some other robocall stuff, but maybe we'll leave that for after. Um, I think that um, it's important to, yeah, it's important to, to uh, commit to continuing to work with these environmental groups, continuing to oppose the Northern Gateway Pipeline. I think this is one of the, the biggest fights of our lives, and I'm excited to connect with the people in this room to, to do work on opposing that pipeline, and so grateful to be here today. Thanks very much.